So we're carrying on the theme of doing frame generator videos on the channel uh, following a, a string of recent frame generator beginner videos. We're going to look in this one at cutting lists, kind of cutting lists. It's when you've got a frame made up of sections of similar sizes and in a parts list you want to group them all together to show how much how material you need to buy for one particular section rather than have them itemized individually. That's what this one's kind of all about. And so it's slightly more advanced than the other ones that we've done. And I'm going to show you some best practices along the way. So we're going to start from the beginning, mate, from the scratch. If you're not interested in seeing the start and you just want to get straight to the drawn bit, well, then just scrub the timeline along the way. Start seeing a drawn template, uh, like a drawn border, and then you can uh, play from there. So we're going to start with a new assembly. And, uh, yeah, we're going to kind of mimic a real-life example here. We're going, to, we're going to create a top-level GA and then put a frame in it because not everybody just makes a frame and then that's it you tend to put a frame inside something else. So we're going to call this top level GA and we're going to save this into my workspace. So this for all intents and purposes could be like a vehicle. It could be a vessel, whatever. It could be anything that you need to put a frame in. We don't just make a frame and then that's it, which is where a lot of videos and admittedly a lot of mine seem to revolve around. So this is a top level GA, which is going to have the frame inside it as a sub assembly. So we're going to click create. We're going to make an assembly and it's going to be purchased depends where you work this mate it depends where you work because not every manufacturing company has the ability to manufacture frames some companies tend to do the designing of the frame and then put it out to get made by a fabricator if that's the case then i do the designing and then the frame itself is purchased so that's what we're doing here we're going to drop it into a sub assembly called fr0001 that's the sub that's going to be the frame's name it's the unique part number of the frame and then we're going to call this fr001 so that's the top level of the frame and the frames inside our top level ga so we're going to click ok drop him in there anywhere in space that's fine so the, all the frame pieces are going to be localized in here and uh, we're going to start with the skeletal model which is going to be a reference part mate because there's the skeletal model doesn't exist doesn't it doesn't exist in real life so you don't want it to be any parts list and we need to give this a name as well so it's going to be 0001-skel-001 the reason for this is so that when this is saved to disk, you know which top level frame the skeletal model's used in, and it's unique. So the next one you do could be FR002-skel, so you don't get all your skeletal models all interlinked and mixed up with each other and reference issues and whatnot. So you click OK, drop them in, and we can now start modeling up the actual frame itself. So we're going to do a sketch on the XY plane, and we can do just something simple. I'm not going to model up anything like a car or a boat. In a, in a tutorial like this it's going to be long enough already uh, so we'll do it two meters by one meters one meters one meter and we'll extrude them up by i don't know 500 whatever and i likes me some clear skeleton models so we can change the texture to uh, clear and because it doesn't exist we don't need to give it a material because it's not made of anything because it doesn't exist as i keep saying yeah i'll probably do i'll probably do we can drop a sketch on the top and give it a cross member just so it looks a little bit uh, a little bit futuristic <laughs> it's so it's just not a box anything that doesn't look like a box is futuristic to me uh, we're gonna click return and we've jumped out the skeletal model we'll hit save so it saves that the disk so we've got fr001 the top level frame and then we've got fr001 scale the skeletal model click ok right we can now start dropping in some frames so we're going to go to the design tab and hit insert frame this is where it bounces over the content center if at this point you get a message saying that it can't find you get like a square in the screen saying uh, it can't find x y and z with lots of red writing then you need to go and check out my video for setting up the content center because uh, you need that so we're going to select the standard we're going to go for iso because i'm in brexitville and we're going to just go for a bit of square hollow section we'll go for 50 by 50 by 2 and we'll untick this button here, get frame members part number from the content center, because I want to put in my own part number in a bit. And uh, if you don't, if you have that ticked, it's going to give your frames the part number of uh, the family name, the size. It just creates this string of numbers and makes that the part number, which in, in some companies you just don't care. But in the ones I work out, we kind of do care. So I want to give it a unique part number. What we're going to do now is we're going to just do a window select around all these bottom pieces. And then for anything that's got a sketch on it, you don't want to do a window because it will end up putting two frames on top of each other. If you window around these edges, it'll put a frame on the model edge and on the sketch, which is non bueno. You don't want that. And then we can click OK. Right. Now it's going to create some extra subcomponents, which again, we need to give a unique name. So we can call this FR001. We'll just call this subframe-001. This is a subassembly within our subassembly. 
which uh, holds all the frames together and then this is the IPT that holds all the frames together okay you don't really edit these uh, you, know, you definitely don't edit the skeletal model anyway so we can uh, you just sort of set and forget it and um, we can call this scale dash zero zero so this is the second scale so we can call it zero zero two uh, and make sure that these are going to go into the uh, the fr zero zero one subfolder which they are and it puts them in a subfolder called frame which I don't want to so I'm going to delete those out as well I don't like too many subfolders click OK and then this is where things start to get a little bit awkward right so it's going to create us 13 frame pieces and on disk the file name is going to be ISO 50 by 50 by 2 and then all of this rubbish here that would have been our part number if we had left that last box ticked but I don't want to call these this I want to give them a unique number so what I'm going to do is go into each this is really awful it's a lot easier if you using vault you know shameless plug for vault here but with vault you can do this automatically so I'm going to call this fr001 and this is the first sub component and I'm just going to say this is going to be 001 and then what I'm going to do is copy that the clipboard and then I'm going to rename every single one of these files numerically and I'm not going to sit and make you do uh, watch us do this I'll just fast forward this bit There we go, right, okay, so two days later and I've finished renaming all of those, we can now click OK and this is going to be the, the new names of our frames which is uh, something which is unique to the frame that they're used within it just makes things a lot easier, it does, it really does and we we'll click save, OK and on disk now, if we just do a quick open and go into the frame folder, you can see we've now got, that's the top level assembly and then all of these frames here are all of these here aka all of these here so you can now reference what which frame pieces in which frame itself it just makes things easier mate it does it just it does make things easier anyway i mean if you want to you can now start mitering stuff off you can start mitering corners and doing your trims and your notches and your extends and and what whatever whatever you would do at this point i'm not going to do all that because the whole point of this video is the uh, is the cutting list so we're going to go uh, return back up to the top level and we're going to click new drawn uh, we'll do a DWG because why not and uh, if you click base view and you drop in the the top top level GA what's going to happen uh, when you create a parts list is it's going to create uh, an itemized list of just that fabrication so we probably should give this a description so we should really go into FR001 this one here and then we should give this a description uh, and this would be frame chassis uh, and then okay on that one we'll go back to the draw and you'll see there so if you're detailing the top level GA uh, which would be the very top level assembly then the frame itself is just a single line item uh, but you then want to create a detailed drawing of the frame chassis itself showing all the individual members so we can do that we can go I mean, you can do it in the same sheet you could probably do it in the same sheet if you wanted to uh, you could have a single drawing with multi sheets or you could do it as a separate drawing it's up to you so we'll, uh, we'll do it in one drawing we'll go on to sheet two and then we'll create a base view but instead of it being the top level we can change go into uh, the subfolder and say I want to create a drawing of the subframe drop that on the sheet like this click OK and then when we do a parts list of this it's going to list every single one of the frame pieces so we'll go annotate parts list click OK it's going to give us the thing to say the bomb view is not enabled yes I know and by default you get this so this is the problem that we're trying to to fix here it's itemizing every single frame individually so we should probably just make that there you go so yeah you've got you know one item number one is two meters of structural steel hollow section and then item two is five meters. so you want to combine these all really so to do this edit the parts list style to change how it behaves so what you do is go into the manage tab go into the styles editor and then go into the parts list subcategory uh, take which, which one should we edit? I mean, we do have material list, which kind of does the job, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it our own. We'll right click on parts list and create a new style. So we can call this frame gen parts list and then click add. Yeah, add to standard. OK, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the column chooser and I'm going to take out the part number because the, to be fair, the part number is not really relevant in this case. All we need is the item number, the description. Uh, and the not the quantity what we need is the unit quantity so we're going to add the unit quantity and take out the regular quantity uh, click OK on that next step is to go to the properties of the unit quantity column 
So left click on that, and we're going to go into substitution. We're going to enable value substitution and then browse for unit quantity. Click OK. So what this means is when the rows emerged, the va when when these emerge, unit quantity, when the when they merge, the value used is the sum of the values. So when it combines everything of unit quantity together, add them all up. And we're going to apply some unit formatting to be length, meters, and precision 2.12. We'll put a full stop in because, again, Brexitville. And on this, I think we'll just stick with quantity instead of unit quantity. Click OK. Hit save on that. Uh, and a couple of other things we can do, I suppose, is under grouping, uh, we can group everything by description and this is how it groups them all together it looks at the description of all the frame pieces and providing that the description is the same then it'll group them all together and then summarize them all up uh, so yeah we'll do that by description i uh, will not display group participants but we'll display item numbers click ok click save save and close right so that's not going to do anything immediately because this parts list isn't using that new style so what we'll do is we'll click it we'll go to annotate and then the style we're going to change this to our frame gen parts list and then there you go so we've got uh, items 1 to 13 is the structural seal called for where uh, yada, 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 hollow sections and we've got 16.34 meters of this uh, material and then that's how you do it that's how you combine all your bits and pieces together to uh, to create a uh, single cut list if you find that i mean this is a little bit deceiving actually because the description isn't showing us the size where there's nothing there to say well this is actually 50 by 50 by whatever it was uh, so that is a little bit this is a little bit inaccurate it's not uh, how i would do it in real life so we're going to go back into the styles editor uh, let's go to the parts list again we'll go to column chooser and i'm thinking out of the content center which of these properties does have the size in I'm thinking stock number might let's just have a look Let's just save and close on that and uh, we'll give this a kick in the backside by selecting frame journalist there we are stock number 50 by 50 by 2. so what we'll need to do now is we'll need to change the the grouping value we'll need to change which property it's grouping everything on uh, just in case you do have different size frames in your uh, in your sub assembly so we're going to go to grouping and we're going to group by stock number instead click ok save and close and then there you go so if we in fact no we're going to do this i'm not just going to do all this theoretically and say oh if you did this then it should work no i'm going to show you that it works so we're going to go back into our skeleton model i'm going to edit the original uh, skeleton model we'll drop a a new cross member from here down to here and uh finish that return up to that and we'll drop in uh, a new bit of square hollow section but we'll just do it at a different size so all the other ones were 50 by 50 by 2 we'll make this one 30 by 30 by 2 across there so that's a slightly smaller section uh, the part number we got up to item number 13 so this needs to be uh, fr001-14 and then okay return let's go back to our drawing and then uh yeah, I'm not sure why I had to do that. I'm not sure why I had to reselect the standard for it to uh, to refresh. That's not the desired behavior that I would have expected, but it, it works. It works nonetheless. So you can see item number 14, which is that new cross member, is 2.06 meters. You can, I can't find a way of rounding this up because uh, you, you you can round it down if you put it on a desk. So let's just, just try this. Like I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I'm just curious to see what happens to you myself. I'm not entirely sure. If we go back into the styles and go back to unit quantity and then change the uh, precision to 1.1, one decimal place, I would want this to go to 16.4, not 16.3, because you don't want to order too little. So go OK, save, save and close. This is annoying. I don't know why we have to... Does update work? No, update doesn't work. This is a little bit annoying. But nevertheless, yeah, 16.3. So it's rounding it down. That's non bueno. That's not good. Don't like that. Uh, that's going to order too little. I'd want it to round up rather than round down. But what can you do? Maybe it's on the idea station. I don't know. But either way, there you go. That's how you create your cut list. Uh, if you want your own description in here, in fact, you might not even. Well, you actually would want the description in because you'd need to tell somebody that it's a structural hollow section. Yeah, if you wanted to create your own description and have a, you know, SHS, something like that, and then the, uh, the the BS number, 
you could copy that light you could copy that frame from the standard content center into your own content center and then edit the description uh, or the family properties in your content center library which is something that i've shown you how to do in another video it would take too long to do in this video uh, i've already done that in a separate video but yeah that's how you would create your cutting list that's how i would organize my frames uh you and, and name them and crucially crucially name them quite uniquely so that they are identifiable and you don't end up with just standard content center names and part numbers across the board uh, because now we do have unique part numbers if you go into our subassembly and then go into the bill of materials you can see we've got uh, actual proper recognizable part numbers and file names here instead of just you know long strings of text it just keeps things manageable it does it keeps things manageable and uh, don't forget at the start of the video we uh, we changed the uh, the, the bomb structure of the uh, the subframe we changed the bomb structure of the skeletal model uh, which was this one here so uh, yeah that's something that you just need to keep an eye on really uh, document settings purchased because by default that goes to phantom which if you were placing this frame in the top level ga as phantom it would have exploded all the frames up into a single list which you might want if that's something that you manufacture but if you buy it out and put it out for a fabricator then you'd want it set to purchased so it behaves a little differently and if you think i have no idea what you're talking about mate I, i've lost you what i'm what i mean by that again i know i'm waffling but this is all relevant information back in the bill of materials if this top level frame was set as phantom when you go to the structured list you'd see a whole list of parts here you'd see all the frame members individually but because we've set this here as purchased this entire fabricated frame work appears as a single line item in the top level rather than exploding it out into individual frames so that bomb structure really does matter it does matter i need to do a separate video on those actually but it's just a case of structuring how i do that but never mind that's a different thing for a different day thank you very much that'll do it for this one that's how you do your parts list once you've got that set up in your uh, your template providing that you know how to do the uh, manager styles which again i've done a video on that as well mate you know check out my back catalog man i've got a lot going on there you want to hit save and you'd save your frame gen parts list in your style library so that parts list is available in all drawings you do in the future because the last thing you want to be doing is editing this every single time you do a drawing and uh, going to quantity uh, ch change the grouping and changing the, the substitution and yeah you, no one can be no one's got time for that right there you go off you trot crack on and i'll see you in the next one cheers Toodles. <laughs>